Hello, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to focus on rational functions, namely graphs that end up with holes in them. And before we start off, I think we should begin with domain. Let's say you determine the domain of this particular graph. Recall that a long time ago when you were first taught how to graph, you would plug in numbers for x, and once you, once you get your answers, that would be the corresponding y values. And then you would take those points and plot them. Well, the numbers that you plug in are considered the domain. So what we want to know is, what numbers can we plug in? Now, the idea should be simply this. You should be able to plug in whatever you like. As long as we don't have the square root of a negative number, or the square, or rather uh, an undefined, meaning that you get zero in the denominator. And with problems like this, where you have x down here, you always have that issue. Therefore, your domain is just simply going to be anything except whatever makes this part here zero. And since x minus 8 cannot be zero, what that means is that x cannot be 8. So our domain, therefore, is all real numbers except 8, which means you can plug in anything you like, except we'd have to leave 8 out of it. Getting the domain is key because whatever values are excluded from the domain are what we're going to use to help you determine the holes in the graph. Let's say that we were going to graph this one. First thing, again, let's get the domain. The domain, again, is anything that we can plug in except whatever makes this denominator 0, which basically means we cannot plug in 3. Therefore, 3 is excluded. So all real numbers except 3 works for this graph. What you'll want to do now is you'll want to factor the numerator and the denominator. Once we fully factor that out, we want to reduce this fraction to something that's more simple. You can also consider using division. Synthetic division works nicely if the degree on the bottom is 1. But the supposition here is that it would have to be so that if you were going to divide, the remainder would have to be 0. If the remainder isn't 0, you're going to get a totally different outcome, and that's not for this video. So let's go ahead and factor this out first. That's what the numerator factors out to, x plus 2 times x minus 3. And now we can reduce. Hopefully you see that x minus 3 reduces out top and bottom. I want to make a note that we couldn't reduce up here and go 6 over 3 reduces to 2 and 1. The reason why is because the 6 and the 3 are part of a grouping that has more than one term. So if you wanted to reduce out the 6, we couldn't do that unless it was the entire group together. Just as with x minus 3, it would have to be the entire group. Here, x minus 3 is in, in its entirety is being reduced out because this entire grouping is multiplied to the rest of the numerator. So that's the key here. It's got to be multiplied to the rest of this whole thing. 6 is not being multiplied to anything. That's why we couldn't do that up there. So again, we factor first, then reduce second. So that's the simplified version of this equation. Let's go ahead and graph this simplified version, which hopefully you recognize is a line. The slope of this line is 1. The y-intercept is 2, so there we are. Now, that's the complete graph for this simplified version. But remember, that's not what we were given in the beginning. This is what we were given in the beginning. Now, there is only one difference between the two. Remember that since this is essentially the equivalent of x plus 2, yes, it's the same graph, but with one exception. Since in the beginning, we determined that domain could not include 3, that means there's going to be a hole in the graph, right where 3 is. Now, you can do that by simply tracing it on the graph, and hopefully you'd be able to figure that out. And if you graphed it carefully, you would know that it's right there at 3, 5. Or what you could do is you could take 3 and plug it in. The reason why we do that is simple. 3 is excluded from this one, but it's not excluded from the simplified version. Therefore, since they're essentially the same graph but with one little difference, if you take this value and plug it in here, we'll know what the point should have been. So plugging in, you get 3 plus 2, and what we wind up with is 5.
So therefore, again, 3 comma 5 is the location of the point where there's going to be a hole in the graph. And that's all there is to it. Again, the difference between the graphs is this. This graph with the hole is the original equation. This simplified version is the same line, but without the hole in the graph. So you have to go by what you were originally given in the first place. Let's do one more. Let's say we were to graph this one. Let's again begin with the domain. Recall the domain is all real numbers except whatever makes the denominator here zero. So let's try and figure out those two values. So x squared minus 2x equals zero, or rather not equals zero. Now if you're tempted to divide both sides by x, keep in mind that if you do that you will lose an answer. So if you can divide something out completely, or rather a variable out, you can also factor it out. So factor out x from both terms. And now we use the zero product rule. The zero product rule simply states that either this is zero or this is zero. For the first one, we get x cannot be zero. For the second one, we get that x cannot be two. So that's our domain. All real numbers except zero and two. Now that we have our domain, let's get on to the next part. The next part being that we completely factor this out and reduce. A reminder that you can use synthetic division, or rather long division in this particular case if you wish, but we'll just simply stick to factoring. We already know the denominator. We've done the work for that. It factors out to x times x minus 2. For the numerator, x squared factors out of both terms to give us x squared times the quantity x squared minus 4. Hopefully you see that this part here is the difference of two squares, x squared minus 4, which means we can take this even further. That's x minus 2 times x plus 2. Now that we have this completely factored out, we can go ahead and reduce this now. x minus 2's reduce out. And hopefully you recognize that these two reduce out as well. You have x to the second and x to the first. That leaves us with just x to the one up top. Therefore, what we have left now is just x times a quantity x plus 2. Or better put, x squared plus 2x. Okay, so that's our simplified version of f of x. Okay, now let's go ahead and get to the business of graphing, and we want to graph this simplified version. Hopefully you recognize it as a parabola. And this video doesn't really go too deeply in how to graph parabolas in general, so I'm going to go a little fast here. Hopefully you recognize that this opens up since the leading coefficient is positive. The axis of symmetry, remember, is negative b over 2a, b being 2, a being the leading coefficient, 1. Plug in those values and we get negative 1, which means that this parabola gets cut in half by the line x equals negative 1. So the vertex lies somewhere on this line. Since it lies somewhere on this line, we already know the x-coordinate, negative 1. Go ahead and plug that into our simplified version, so that way we can get the y-coordinate. Do that, and we wind up with negative 1. So negative 1, comma, negative 1 is the location of the vertex. And since this opens up, we know that it's going to pass through the x-axis on two different locations. So let's determine those intercepts. Remember that to determine the x-intercepts, what you do is you plug in 0 for y. So that's what we're going to do here. So 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x. Factor this out, you get x times the quantity x plus 2. Again, using the zero product rule, we get x-intercepts being 0 and negative 2. Let's go ahead and graph those points. Okay, let's get a little bit more information so that way we can get a better sense of how this graph looks like. If we try to get the y-intercept, you'll notice from the graph at least, the y-intercept is the same as this x-intercept. So that'll give us no new information. 
These are the points that we have graphed so far. 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 2, 0, with negative 1, negative 1 being the vertex. What we do here is, if we want to get another point, we just simply count down or count up from the vertex. If we count up from the vertex, we'd be plugging in 1. If we count down, we'd be plugging in negative 3. So I chose negative 3. If you plug in negative 3, and remember, we're plugging it into this, the reduced form here, what we get is 3. Let's go ahead and graph that point. Now remember, because of symmetry, that means that if we have a point two units away on the left, that means you go two units away to the right to get another point. Which essentially means this. If we had plugged in 1 instead of negative 3, we would have gotten the same answer. Since that's enough for a graph, there we are. And that would be it if we were just simply graphing this one. But keep in mind that's the simplified version of the actual equation, which is the one on the left. Remember, they're supposed to look exactly the same, but with one additional condition. These two cannot be graphed on there, which means we need to exclude them. So what we do then is we take those two values, start with 0 first, and plug into the simplified version to figure out where those points might have been. If you plug in 0, you'll get one point, and if you plug in 2, you'll get, in, you'll get a second point. No need to plug in 0. Remember that we already figured that one out. So we know we already have a hole in the graph at the origin. If we plug in 2 for x, we'll get the other point. That would give us 8. Therefore, 2 comma 8 is the location of the other hole in the graph. That would put us up here somewhere. So that would complete the graph. Remember, the difference between these two, the one on the left and the one on the right, is just simply those holes in the graph. One last thing before we end this video. If the denominator does not reduce out entirely, this graph will look completely different. Remember, this is all predicated on the fact that the denominator cannot be zero. But we eventually managed to get the denominator to reduce out to give us a more simplified formula, namely this one. However, if the denominator did not reduce out, then what would happen is that the graph itself will not have holes right there. Instead, what you'll get are asymptotes. And the graph, again, looks completely different. Again, that's not for this video, but that's how you would approach it. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.